So this is a, I'm going to talk even though there's words on the screen, so you're going to hear it or me. Um, and you can choose. So in 2014, this pufferfish was named. Uh, and uh, it was 1995. Uh, this is these are these are found off of the uh, I think it's pronounced Ryukyu Islands in Japan between um, just north of Taiwan and uh, the Ryukyu Islands incidentally which has a lot of really interesting stuff in it and I'd like to go at some point I'm just okay. just a just a point is there order a, here is there a geological reason that they are uh, interesting. I don't know. Um, um, Biologic, I, I, it looks, it looks like a, a rift edge of some sort. But I, I know very little about it except when I went to find, figure out where these pufferfish were, and I found once again yet another fascinating, you know, animal behavior story that I was interested in. It's like, oh, it's in the Ryukyus. I'm like, oh, again, okay, what's going on there? I don't know. Anyway, uh, in I think I said the 19, 1995 scuba divers had been noticing these underwater circles um, and didn't know to what to attribute them. And it was a long time. It was um, a couple, almost a couple of decades uh, before, uh, in 2013, uh, a, a paper in Scientific Reports came out called Role of Huge Geometric Circular Structures in the Reproduction of a Marine Puffer Fish. And so here it is, it's zooming out now. You can see, like, this this animal has just made this incredible thing. It takes him, I think the BBC said two, two weeks. Oh, but it, yeah, the, the scientific paper says seven to nine days, working just constantly, because, of course, this is not, you know, not tides change what he's building here. So it, it's a he. It's a he. <clears throat> it's a he. And uh, the behavioral description of what's going on actually came before the scientific name of the fish. So the, that's just an interesting little little glitch, right, in the usual order of things where we didn't even know for sure that this wasn't a species that had already been named and was just doing something different than its, you know, its kin elsewhere uh, until after the behavior was described. And is that replaying? Yeah, so we can, we can stop now. Um, so... Males are spending seven to nine days. It's always males. Wait, wait, wait. Question for you. Yeah. Do we know its mating system? I don't see any evidence of it. But, well, no. I, 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 I can tell you what little I know. And we and, can predict it. Well, yes. Uh, so males spend seven to nine days actively making and tending these nests. And there are at least three characteristics of these nests that are heretofore unknown otherwise in fishy fish, in ray fin fish, actinopterygians. Uh, and... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of fascinating fish behavior, of course, as as, as we've talked about a little bit, but as many people will, will know. Um, but those radially aligned peaks and valleys outside of the actual nest site, um, no one's ever seen fish do that before. Those placing of the shell fragments along the peaks uh, is new in fish behavior. And then the fine sand particles gathered in the nest site, which you couldn't necessarily see, but maybe you can infer having now seen the big geometric design from on high, that they specifically are, are moving the sand around to create a central, what ends up being the nest, of very fine sand. And um, those three things, the peaks and valleys outside, the shell fragments on the peaks, and the fine sand in the middle in its own geometric but slightly more regular pattern, are all constructed and maintained before mating, before a female ever shows up. Sure. Female shows up. So wait, wait, wait. I want to predict the stuff before you... Okay, I don't I don't know very much, but uh, yeah, go for it. Um, so it's going to be a polygynous mating system. Not clear. Well, I'm going to predict that it will be... A, that males will invest nothing in... that If that's a male, they will invest nothing in offspring beyond gametes. Yeah, and I think that's not true. Not true. So yeah. that's part of why I want to do this, is yeah. see whether the system is any different, because... You know, what it, of course, looks like is a an aquatic bowerbird analog. Mm -hmm. exactly. Are the circles near each other? I don't know. Uh, and I don't know if my read was uh, incomplete or if it wasn't described. Um, they are, after the females visit the nests, the nests mostly collapse and then they get so the the eggs are laid on fine sand and then they're covered with coarser sand and it's it is likely it seems to me um, that the fineness of the sand increases fitness of the eggs so wait 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 these 
are the locations where the eggs are laid. The middle of that area. So you've got the radial arms outside of the center. Like imagine it's sort of like a daisy. The middle part ends up like a daisy being the actual reproductive part. So that's very unlike the bowerbird example. Yeah. Well, um, in, in some ways, in some ways. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it is, it's, it's kind of, it is very much actually like a daisy. It hadn't occurred to me before, so but then, you know, in terms of, you know, the petals are basically the, the lure from afar, uh, for, you know, not other daisies, but you know, the, the vectors, the pollinators, um, to come and pollinate. And it's the center thing. It's the center ring, um, that is where the eggs are actually laid. So then it might not be a polygynous system. This right. might be a mysteriously valuable structure. And well, and it's, it's mysteriously valuable. It starts collapsing in and of itself quickly. I think um, that there is there are a few days of sort of male tendon, uh, attendance, so male parental care, and then he goes and builds another one, and uh, it's it's off it, and starts over from scratch once the once the first one. So it it, it may be actually a promiscuous system in which. Um, you know, if, if you have built the careful nest and you can attract a good mate, that's great. And you have that one thing. And then after that, whatever it is, a few weeks, you can go and, and build another. Yeah. So this is actually potentially closer to your frogs, um, where a male might have multiple wells. I see there's no description in what I found of territoriality. Uh, and that's not to say that they're not. I would expect that they are. I see no description of, therefore, uh, the quality of the substrate, right? Uh, you know, what, what determines where, where the fish choose to, to build these nests and, mm-hmm. um, and aesthetic structures around them. Well, one thing that's likely to be true is that structure is likely to be very difficult to build and maintain if there are currents and actually, you can uh, you can just put it back on while we're talking, as long as we're talking about these guys. Uh, yes, and I think they're in s- slightly deep water, but yes, there are currents, and this is this is exactly true. I think I said this already that the maintenance of the structure is needs to be constant. That basically, as soon as the maintenance stops, the, stops thing, it, the thing decays. Which you would kind of expect, because if the male, if n- neither of the fish are going to defend the thing, then what you don't want to do is call is signal potential egg predators right that this is a structure so you would want it to kind of break down but it's like these what are those like uh giant like buddhist sand art oh i was thinking that too right actually. Yeah. that take i don't know like weeks months maybe even to create and they're gorgeous and intricate and then the, the point is in part that they get wiped clean yes, shortly after yep. they are completed um in that case, there is not a, um, a reproductive motive. So, so what we are looking at seems to be either some new kind of system or one of two known kinds of systems. It looks like a bowerbird kind of scenario, but that doesn't sound like bowerbird behavior if the eggs are being laid there. Yeah, and it's unlike... So they're, they're what something less than 20, I think, species, something around two dozen-ish species of bowerbirds in northern Australia and, and Papua New Guinea. And there's different there's different things that the different bowerbirds do. Yep. Um, but they, they build these structures uh, that females, the males build these structures that females are attracted to, uh, but they have some permanence to them. Yes. And they do, you know, they do decay. It's the tropics, and 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 they steal from each other. The male bowerbirds steal from one another, and uh, but they're in a spot. They are territorial of the spot, and they build a structure on the spot, the bower. And that spot is a spot that any female can come back to over and over again. And unless something has happened, um, she knows that if she's in that spot, it's going to be that guy. Whereas uh, except these, they steal bowers, they, they do. But the these are these do not appear to be. Um, territorial yeah um, yeah that's why that's why i think the the bowerbird connection is superficial i was wrong to go there i mean it, it looks like it and the shell part of the story you know i'd be curious whether they steal shells from each other something like that um and whether there is a display well i so the thought i had about the shells was the the functional part of this is the is the center of the daisy right yep. it's it's the nest that's where the eggs are going to be and my guess is that the eggs are actually somewhat fragile and they need a very soft, very finely grained sand nest. 
and the sort of the petals of the daisy, the petal, the the, the would be petals of this of this structure that he's building, are the visual attractant from on far, but the shells he's pulling from inside the nest as be. an indicator of I've cleaned it's the cleaned area. It. Yep. It's it's clear it's clear of the debris that would Im- negatively impact your eggs. Which is reminiscent. That is again reminiscent of bowerbirds and maybe even more so birds of paradise. Yes. Right, the cleaning of the dance floor uh, is a, I don't know if it's universal, but it's close um, mm-hmm. for for all of those species. Um, and, you know, you can make a lot of arguments for why that might be, but... I think mannequins, too. I think mannequins clean their, clean their um, little dance pads in those that have flat pads as opposed to sticks. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm more familiar with the stick dancing uh, mannequins, but... Um, but anyway, interesting because you've got features of multiple terrestrial systems. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be very curious to to know what's actually going on here. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we should get to the uh, Ryukyu Islands and uh, right take now. A look. No, I no, I got no. One thing, it's probably very cold there right now. Yeah.